Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Hey Man. I am Josh. I am Jacob. Hey man. Hey man, what's up? How you doing? Oh, you know, feeling good. Yeah? Yeah, I was feeling a little under the weather when we got back uh, from Erie, Pennsylvania, but came through. Just needed a good day of sleep, that's all. Well, I didn't I didn't come back with you. Uh, I went to Nashville. You did. I'm not going to lie. By the time you had gotten to Nashville, you were already like there and about to perform, I mean, a couple hours from performing by the time I took off. Yo, dude, the show in Nashville was amazing. Good. The first time comic was so good. But we had, and Chance always comes and does a show and he's so funny. Right. But there was this dude named AJ Wilkerson on the show. Okay. I'm, if you are a comedy fan, this is, this dude is coming up. He's got a neck, he, he's got a next level. He's like, they got a next gear. Okay. That is like, and he's so present on stage. Okay. He's fucking so funny. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was there and, you know, we did, um, you know, my buddy Dave Kunzio was there and we did some music. It was, all, it's just always such a good time. You know what's crazy? What? Who just texted me? AJ Wilkerson. Wow. That, that was is weird. like. Strange. Yeah, that is bananas. Right? Yeah, that is weird. Anyways, um, but, right. but such a good show. And thank you for selling out Erie, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you for, um, you sold out our first theater show in Pittsburgh, yep. so we had to add a second one. Thank you so much. I want to tell you that the place in Erie, Pennsylvania is called Keller's. <laughs> um, and when we got there, Jacob was, and it was named after a magician. Yeah. Who did you think it was named after? I thought it was named after Helen Keller. <laughs> <laughs> but did she also spell it? Because they spelled it K-E-L-L-A-R. No, she she yeah, did E-R. Yeah, yeah. So I thought it was. I would I would even tell you she probably didn't even know how they spelled it. <laughs> She probably didn't even know it existed. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm, I mean, how they spelled her name. I'm still so baffled. And I've never, listen, I, I say I'm baffled and I know I could just Google it, but I'm still so baffled how she learned how to do things with no sight, no speaking, no hearing. Yeah. Yeah. It how do you tell somebody what the meaning of something is? If you can't, if she can't see you or hear you. How do you, how does you do anything? My, my, like my, I'm so confused. Like if you don't, if I'm trying to teach you how to read something and I can't tell you what the letter A is, how do I tell you what the letter A is? No, no, no. A hundred percent. Do you know what I mean? I just, you have to trust somebody else with your entire life. I, I, because you're just living with your eyes closed the entire, and your, dude, and your ears plugged. And mouth. They couldn't, she couldn't speak. Yeah. She's got, she's got tape over her. Yeah. It's like a, it seems like an impossible life to live, but she lived it. She thrived. She learned how to read, like, and do shit. Well, well but how well, was do Braille, you Was teach? Braille a thing? I'm sure. Okay. But how do you teach? Like, if someone's blind, I can say to them, touch this. That's the letter A. But she can't read. And so how does she doesn't have an how idea? How does she develop the concept of an alphabet? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's actually a really interesting point, how you even develop the idea of an alphabet. Or of what anything is. What, what does that mean? What does that mean? What, uh, Matt's touching his arm like he's... They uh, Hi, they spelled out the letters on her arms. Yeah, but how do you have a concept of what that is? I'm spelling the letter A. So how, how, how do, do you, you then tell her that that is going to be the letter A? Are you looking online right now? And if, if, no, I, I just knew that. Oh, you just knew that? Yeah. Yeah, but if you spell out the alphabet, what it, to me, I don't even know what that is supposed to mean. How am I supposed to know what letters sound like or how like when they're in Well, not sound, but like meaning. Right, no, 100%. 100%. You know what might happen? Okay. Actually. Thank here, you for that though, Matt. Here's an idea. So say she held a ball. You know, we could just Google all this, right? Yeah, but let's just guess first <laughs> and sound real dumb. Say she held a ball. I bet you what they did is they went, they spelled it on her arm. B-A-L-L. -L, ball. But still, how the fuck? How does she know no. what the letters sound like? How does she know what, what B A L L sounds like or spells? Is my question. Yo, dude, we are probably going to end up getting a bunch of messages like you dumb fucks. <laughs> well, I feel like they're valid questions. Oh, I don't know. 100% valid. Yeah, and also, sorry for not having all the knowledge on fucking Helen Keller. You like, didn't go deep dive on your Helen nah, Keller now? No, I just thought she owned a comedy club. <laughs> Yo, Woo! but she didn't. It was this dude, whatever Keller, who was your uncle's 
mentor, apparently. Well, who who he was? Yeah, he was Houdini's mentor. Apparently, this guy Keller, I can't remember his first name, but they based the Wizard of Oz off of him. Like he's supposed to be the magical wizard. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I got taken through a whole museum while we were in there. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. so glad I avoided that. You were on stage, so you had to avoid it. <laughs> um, I, I, I want you next week to tell the Houdini story. Okay. I'll, I'm gonna do some more research with mom because I thought I had her note that she wrote me about it, and I can't find it. So we'll have to, I'll have to, mom. Well, I'll just tell you, mom. I was gonna say like into the camera, like we'll talk about it, but like we won't just talk right after this. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But yeah, yeah, dude. But great weekend. Yeah, I want to tell you something else. Time. You are getting exponentially. Oh, dude, my arms look great. That one looks really good. The, le the left. Does one? it? The left one looks better than your right one. Yeah, I can't flex this one because it. Oh, your shoulder. Kind of, yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, the, I like touching on that every episode. Hey, I complimented you this time actually instead of bagging on you, <laughs> uh, which makes me want to stop doing it. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> You're catching right on, on the nose, you're baby. Right on, on the bit. nose. Yeah, if you're gonna compliment me, that's no fun. <laughs> um, I uh, I want to tell you, dude. There was this weekend. I and Lee Syatt was with us. Ugh, he's so funny. This guy is also so funny, and he was the he's the producer and and was Joey Diaz's co-host, I guess. Yeah, on um, the church. church of what's happening now. He's getting into stand up. He's so far ahead of the game. Good Lord. He, you know why he's ahead of the game, dude? Because hmm. he sat on Joey's podcast and watched him mm -hmm. he, he, for he, years. He listened and listened, really watched. watched other comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah. funny as shit. Yeah, he's doing a great job. And his, and his, and his vibe on stage is really So funny. good. But I want to tell you, dude, for somebody who's been doing stand-up for five months, you are, and I, I think I say this every week because I'm always just like, wow. But you are getting exponentially better. I, I forgot it. I forgot how quickly you can absorb it if you immerse yourself in it. Mm -hmm. Your growth is so much, you know. Yeah, well, I remember in Jersey we talked about how Friday night I didn't like my set, right? And then Saturday I told myself I was like, I don't want to feel like that again. So I came in with all my energy and that when I come in with all that energy, I'm finding out that it's giving me not a false sense of confidence, but it's giving me that extra boost to be like you got what you're doing. Just keep doing it and mm -hmm. keep bringing that same energy that you want people to know that you have. And so I decided this weekend like to not even think about it and do exactly what I did Saturday in New Jersey. Yeah. And I did it the whole weekend. And you finally took a note that I was giving you. Mm -hmm. I take notes every now and then. <laughs> I, take, I, take, I take notes, but at the same time also, sometimes I go up there and I just forget, truthfully. Like yeah, it's not even that I don't forget. It's just that... I've done it a certain way so many times that the note is, it's a muscle memory. So when yeah. I get the note, I'm like, do the note. But then I get up there and my brain's like, what note? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm with you. But I've, I've taken them all. And then there's one that really works in the, in the first joke and the Miley joke. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a whole bunch of fun. Well, I'm super proud of you, man. I'm super proud of you. I appreciate it. I will tell you, I, I drove over here today and I really, I was, one of my favorite songs to sing in the car came on. Okay. And I really, I think my favorite car songs, I was thinking about this on the way over, are not my favorite karaoke songs. No. Car, car songs are generally ones that, that I would, I aspire to be able to sing. Correct. Right? Because you can sing them with the windows up. Same, the car songs and shower songs are yes. the same thing. Yes. But a karaoke song is one that I know I it's have. It's in your real house. Yeah. However, also some karaoke songs are for people who are like drunk and just go, oh, I really love that song. And their shower songs are their karaoke songs because that liquid courage makes them think it is. Do you want to know? That's true. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, trust me, if you go up to a karaoke bar, 95% of the people who go up there are drunk people who just want to scream the lyrics of a certain song. Do you know what's funny about Which karaoke? Which is fun, by the way. I, you either, you, you, for karaoke, here's the thing. You either got to be really good or, or really, really bad. bad. I don't want to see anyone in the middle. Yeah, because I don't want to see average. I want to see terrible or awesome. Because yeah, awesome, I'm down for it. Terrible, I'm down also for it. down for yeah, it. Yeah, because yeah. they're going to make a fool of themselves. But you middle of the road karaokers, leave it up to the, the shit the beds or the they should be. Yeah, it's the only time I'll say leave it up to the extremes on either side. Don't be somewhere in the middle. Yeah, yeah. The it's middle. the only time I'll say that about anything. It's no fun to watch. No. It's no fun to watch. No, agreed. But you know what? One of my favorite in the car songs is. Ooh, ooh, let's play this game. Okay, well, well you'll never guess. It. Oh, okay, then never mind. Let's not play this game. <laughs> it's by it's from a band called Hall and Oates. 
I know that. Wait, what song do I know by them? A lot, probably. Yeah, dude. There's um, Rich Girl. He's a oh, rich girl. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, yeah no, and song. there's uh, Sarah Smile, which is a good one. Do they sing Brown Eyed Girl? No, that's somebody. That's who, Van Morrison. Van Morrison. Um, I, you know what's crazy is that like, actually, I should parody Brown Eyed Girl and just leave the title Brown Eyed Girl. Yeah, I mean, it, I could just, I mean, right? Yeah. You you. Well, what, you could do. You don't have to think of the song right my now. Brown eyed girl, right? Because I'm saying, comma, girl. Right, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I'll a little think, more thought into it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but first idea is not always the best idea. No, thanks for <laughs> thanks for the reality check. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Got to keep them humble, folks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Woo! But the song She's Gone by Holland Oates. Dude, the best. Should I look it up? Uh, do it in the car because then okay. we won't be able to monetize this song. <laughs> okay. Dude, we can't play a song. But do, dude, it's such a fucking okay. banger. Okay. I, I Yeah, yeah. I, but I was, I was, I listened to it on repeat on the way from the house to here. Nice. There's a couple songs I have like that. What What is that for Well, you? it kind of depends. Like, if I'm in, like, a new... If I find a song that I really like, or, like, a couple songs that I really like, every time I get in the car, I'll start it from the top and just listen to those five, and then I'll just let the rest of my playlist shuffle. Um, right now on repeat is an artist called Central C. He's a British rapper. Yeah. Um, and so I've had a lot of his stuff on. And then I found this kid called... Uh, Cre I think his name is Creed the Kid. Yeah. And I found two songs by him that I really like. So I'm but, all, I have like five or six right now that are just at the top that I just... But your, in, your singing car songs are hip-hop? No. No. My singing, my singing the car songs... Well, look, I I like to sing Have you ever sung the like the Celine Dion in the car? No. What what do I sing in... Oh, oh, sometimes I try to sing Adele in the car. Me too. So, yeah, and it just ends up me screaming. Me too. Um, What's the song you sing? Uh... I think Hello is one of them, like that one of her very first ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a... Uh, fuck. I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and When We Were Young, that one. I don't know that one. Do I? I do not. You definitely know that one. I do? Oh, yeah. Okay. How do you, one of her early things. You, if I, I'll play it for you when we get out of here. You definitely know that song, When okay. We Were Young. All right. Yeah. Um, but, but then also some of my... Well, look, I've only done karaoke once, but it was in Panama. Well, we're going to go some weekend after our shows. What? We'll go to a karaoke bar, me and you. Okay. Also, or we could do it here and bring mom and I'm on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Might be more fun. Yeah. That, um, that's a good idea. Yeah, but I did a... I, I actually, funny enough, did do a hip-hop song for my first karaoke song. A hip? Uh, I did. Which one? They had a J. Cole song up there. So I did a J. Cole song, which was fun. My go-to karaoke songs are... You ready? Yep. Rebel Yell, Billy Idol. Okay. Sexual Healing, Marvin Gaye. To, wow. Wow. To, look, the spectrum in between those two songs are crazy. Like, like <laughs> the amount of difference is insane. I don't know why my voice, uh, if I was going to pick two songs that my voice fits perfectly, it's those two. And that's really bizarre. Okay. Really interesting. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and then I uh, want a dead or alive. Bon Jovi always a good one. Yeah. Yeah. That I, I heard a couple people sing that when we were in Panama and I was like, oh, I could fucking do this. Like, <laughs> So I'd probably do that, but a lot of the songs that I would sing at karaoke, I don't think are like typical karaoke songs. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. a lot of karaoke songs are like classic songs. A lot of the karaoke that I, like if I were to choose to do it, would be something more, um, you, dude, uh, what's the word of present? There yeah. It is. I, I think having songs everybody knows is the way to go because to but me, I can still pick a present song yes, that everybody knows. Yes. And I think that's the way to go. Which I did with the J. Cole song because every, everybody knew who it was. Legit, dude. To me, it's a there's I feel so bad. There is not a lonelier person than the person singing karaoke that nobody's listening to. Yeah. That is a fucking rough song. Which by the way is the amateur karaoke. That's that well, like, that's the middle. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. middle. That's what we're saying. If you're good, they watch you and you have energy, they watch you. If you're bad and still have energy, they watch you. Yeah, like, that th those are the two. Again, if you're anywhere in the middle, just sit back and enjoy who yeah, the fuck goes yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, so what else has been happening this week, dude? Um, oh, I want to talk about something that happened in Erie on Friday night that I told you somewhere in the middle of the morning. I was going to wait to see if you wanted to talk about this. No, I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it. Okay. I think it's I think it's funny to talk about. Me too. Um, so Friday night, uh, me, 
my dad and Lisa I all decided to take some mushrooms after our, we only had one show Friday night, which yep. was super awesome because that never happens. Right. So we, after our one night or after our one show, we all took mushrooms and I look, I got to say for the first hour and a half, two hours, maybe it was just an hour and a half. I, I was good. Like I was having a great time. I was like, these are fun. They're stronger for sure, but I'm, I'm good. And then as we got to that second and third hour, it was for the first time that I'm not going to lie. I was like uncomfortably high. Like to a point, this, I wasn't a panic set in, but you know when you underestimate your drugs? Yeah. Hold like, on. This I'm, is, I'm writing a note right now. I am going to write a song called Uncomfortably High. Yeah. I think that uncomfortably is... Uncomfortably numb. You can do uncomfortably high. That's uncomfortably... Yeah. Um, high. But for those of you who don't do drugs or... Uh, what are you waiting for? No, or, I'm just kidding. Yeah, maybe. Or have never done them or don't do them anymore. Uh, look, if you talk shit about your drugs, just know this they're going to come punch you right in the face. Because yeah. that's just how, I don't know why that's how life works, but that's how life works. Let me and ask you a question. I was, okay. Do you now, like, because that's the amount that I take to go on stage. Which is bonkers to me. But I also haven't taken a raw mushroom in a yeah. really yeah, long yeah, yeah, time. Yeah. And I remember the first time you took those, the first time you took those mushrooms, you took half of what I took. Yeah. And you were like, I couldn't go on stage right now. Right. The second time you took it, you were like, oh, okay, I'm good. Yeah. I took double what you took the first time. Yeah. I understand it. Like, not a chance I would have been able to talk to anybody. Yeah. And, and I wasn't. Thank God. We were sitting in the hotel room and I was hiding under my covers. Like, when the <laughs> fuck is this going to end? <laughs> I'm Be also an old head, dude. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. But I'm a pretty experienced young cat. Like, yeah, but there's something about in your brain, your brain being able to go back. I, I, look. Even if I do freak out, I'm just a Xanax away from relaxing. Do you have a Xanax on you at all times? Uh, not as far as you know, but... Now, you know I'm not. I've, I've taken half of one before. I hate it. Oh, you don't like it? I don't They're the worst. I don't love it. I don't... I, I get people who use it for, like, flying. Like, uh, yeah, like yeah. a close buddy of mine has, has a half of one when he flies uh, from coast to coast because he hates flying and yeah. knocks him out for the entire flight. Yeah. So, I totally get that. But I tried it once recreationally in high school. I'm good. You know, I'm so happy that you didn't like it. I'm so happy that things like Vicodin and the pills, because to me, the pills are insidious, dude. And one, I read something where if you take a full prescription of Vicodin, yeah, the full whatever 15 days, you're close to being addicted. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but like, I'm so glad that I never liked Vicodin. I yeah, just never liked it. it. Just, I remember waking up the next morning after taking the Xan and I was like, I don't remember half the night. I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like that. But there, you know, and I was with a couple of friends and, and everybody else didn't like it. And there was only one person who liked it. You know who liked it? Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Which, Dude, foreshadow. Yeah. But, you know, again, is yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I did not like that shit. It wasn't fun for me. Um, and I really just also, I don't really have that addictive of a personality. Like, but I'm also so glad I got into... I'm not glad I got into smoking weed early, but I also am because think I think of the amount of times that I was smoking weed with my friends, like after school on the weeknights or or on the weekends. Like if I translated that to alcohol, yeah, it, it's a it's a whole different. I'm a whole different person if I'm drinking that much. I want you to know that I wish you had started smoking weed later. Yeah, I understand that, and I wish that you waited until at least eight p.m. every day if you were going to smoke. Yeah. So, uh, like, I don't, I still think you probably smoke too much. Oh, I, I definitely started smoking way too early, and I definitely don't smoke as much. Like, in the, even in the last year, I've really cut back. I'll, I'll tell you, man, you smoking early, um, and I've talked to your mom about this, and I had a therapy, one or two therapy sessions. I don't go to therapy anymore. I went specifically for this. Where, because I, I, take a, uh, I take a lot of the, I shoulder a lot of the blame. For I know you, I know you don't, but like, <clears throat> dude, our our relationship is one of where I know you're you're looking, especially as a younger dude, you were looking at me. Yeah, and but I, I started was a, smoking weed before I found out you started before you. I found out you even smoked weed. I was smoking weed because I wanted to try it. I, I, so really, yeah, I, but, I, I, I started. I didn't find out you started smoke. You were smoking weed until I was sixteen. Yeah. I started smoking weed when I was fourteen. Again, yeah, that's too early. So young, yeah, and but again, I wasn't smoking even every weekend. I was smoking like. Maybe once a month. Remember when we go up to my friend Electra's house up in the Hollywood Hills? Yeah. That's where we would smoke. But that was like 
once that was like once a month maybe until like sophomore year became a little more apparent. But once also once I got my med card, it just was a little more available. But again, like dude, uh, I would love to take you to a guy in LA called Dr. Amen. Um, I just, I'm pretty sure I just met a Dr. Amen who gave me my diff- fluid today. Different dude. But same, but right, Dr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen is his I name? Think, yeah, yeah. I think his name is Dr. Amen and um, he does brain scans. And I would be curious to see, would you, would you, are you, would you be into that? Is it something that makes you nervous to see where your brain's at? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I want to put that just on blast. I mean, not it's a not, blast. No, no, no it's a doctor's a, appointment. No, not. I, I mean, I'll blast for myself. Like, I, like, but to to me, the fact that it makes you nervous is m- to me means that maybe you should take a look. Beca- beca- I mean, beca- yeah. Here's what I would say. Because I've you. also had a couple concussions and probably a couple undiagnosed. And here's what I would say to you, dude: is that it's not just the smoking weed. And and I and I and I, and I do think that stand up is help will help because you're using your brain. Right. It's not just the smoking weed. It, it, which kills brain. Right. You're not doing anything to actively enhance it. Not crossword puzzle. Oh, right, right, right. Right, right. Uh, writing, um, word puzzle, a- anything, numbers, anything. B- honestly, dude, building, learning how to play an instrument, learning a language where you're firing shit. Right. That's the only thing that makes me nervous, dude, because I'm going to tell you something. At a certain point in your life, your brain is what you got. Right. That beautiful face is going to be a little older. True. The body is going to stop acting the way you want it to act. But your brain, if you're careful with it, and by the way, dude, they're fine that you can regenerate it now. Oh. And so I would, I, if you were up for it, I, I would bring you down to see Dr. Amen I mean, in LA. Sh- I mean, sure, I guess. Like, there's no harm in it. No. I just don't, like, I wonder, let me ask you something. If, you, if he was like, yo, dude. This isn't great. You have the brain of a 42-year-old. Would that... Do ma- I have the brain of a 42-year-old? Like how old it is. I'm just Is saying, that even possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your brain ages. Do you think, I, do you think I'm going to have a brain no, of a 42-year-old? No, no. I'm oh. just... I'm, I'm asking. This is a hypothetical. If he said to you, man, your brain is aging rapidly, would that change? Is there anything that he could say that where you would be like, yeah, maybe I'll just smoke on the weekends? Or, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, but that's some like... Apocalyptic shit. That's some like do or die shit. That's like sink or swim kind of shit. Yeah. If it's sink or swim, I'm going to fucking swim and stop doing what I can't do in order to stay healthy. But like, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay. If we get there, which we won't. We're going to take you down there. Sure. I want to do the scan too. That's fine. I'm in for that. I really want to see what's going on up in this old clinkaroo. And clean off some cobwebs. Yeah, dude. I really. (laughs) Yeah. I felt super cobwebby this week, man. Like. Legit. Yeah. I uh, I was just run down this week. That yeah, was what I was for me. Me too. Me too. I feel... But like for me, like, well, you had the extra day of travel, but you know, there's such a different t- level of tired. I was talking to mom this morning. Such a different level of tired when you get up on those early flights and you hit those two back to back and you're like, oh, that was a lot, but at least I'm home early to sitting in an airport for seven hours and then getting on a four hour flight. It's just so different. Yeah. And for some reason, I'm so much more exhausted on that seven hour day, which is what I had Sunday. And it's probably because like you meet all those people and you're in an airport where a bunch of shit is airborne and you're sitting next to a bunch of randoms. Like I was stressed. My flight was going to get canceled because it got delayed yep, six it's times. A lot. It's a lot. Like I was, uh, yeah, but I, it's such a different level of, I am a true believer, dude. We meet a lot of people and we're both, we'll sit and talk to whoever comes up and talk to us. Yeah. You get a story. We're going to listen. Yep. I, I, I am a believer in energy and I'm a believer that sometimes people's energy can hop on you. And so sometimes you might come back more tired, yeah. but you just got a lot of people's stuff on you, yeah. you know, dude, you, that, you know, so, uh, humbling this weekend in Erie I had another woman come up and be like, do I get something in my nose? No, I was itching my nose. Oh, okay. Don't worry. I'll, you know I'll what I do something. love about you? You'll tell me right away. Yeah. We, I know, why, why don't you walk around with a bug in your nose? That's gross. But we had a conversation on stage in Tampa. Miami. Was, was, it, it, was it Tampa? It was either Tampa or Miami. It was Florida. Where I was like, if I saw a stranger with a bug in his nose, I would tell him. And you were like, nah. Strangers? See, look. If you're a stranger, but we're sitting and having like a, a conversation for more than just, you know, whatever it is, 
Yeah, I might tell you, depending on however that conversation is going. If you're somebody I know, I'm going to tell you you got a book in public. But if you're a complete stranger and you're telling me if you just walked by a stranger and they had a book hanging out their nose, you would tell them that they had a book out their well, nose? You mean I'm going the other way and I got to turn around and go back? That's my point. But if I'm sitting in front of you and you got a, like a little piece of mayonnaise or something, I'm going to be like, hey, man, you got something in your beard. I'm going to be like, hey, dude. I, I, uh, you know, I, I if guess I was sitting next to somebody on a plane... And they had a, just a fuck, because you know what? I would want the same courtesy. Yeah, I understand that. But also look in a mirror before you leave the house. Hey, am I wrong? Am I wrong, everybody? If you see, I want to know what you guys would do. Please tell me. I'm not telling now, I'm not saying, stranger. I'm not chasing somebody back down the street and be like, excuse me, sir, excuse me, sir, sir, you got one and you got a bat in the right cave there. <laughs> like, I'm not doing that. But if we're all let me in, tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we're all in the general, same general vicinity, and I'm sitting around you, or we're like, yeah. I, we're in line together. But when are you generally in line with someone who you're talking to who's a complete stranger? Well, I'm not talking to them, but if they're if we're in line at whatever coffee place or eat, dude, but but you know who I might not tell? No, I would tell them. Who? Who would you not tell? Well, I would here's the thing. I would I don't want to tell anybody in case they get offended. Also, like I know if I went up to somebody, like some people would be like, "Oh, like why would you? Why would you point that out?" Now I'm so embarrassed. Like, well, you you don't fucking broadcast oh, it. Oh, I'm not saying that, but some people are insecure enough to where they will get mad the fact that you pointed out something about that. Who I would think that everybody. I guarantee you, it's not like you're on the the fucking megaphone in the airport, like, uh, excuse me, or on the jumbotron at Staples. That would like, be amazing. <sighs> Dude, but a hundred percent, I am. You know who I would be nervous to tell? Who? A sir, uh, somebody who is serving me food, because I don't trust them to wash their hands after they take the boogie off. Uh, yeah, okay. So I might leave that until they but, bring me my food, or I would tell them, and so it doesn't fall into my food. Oh. Yeah, but you know they're not washing that. They're just fucking picking, uh, picking flick. The old pick and flick? Why don't you just use a napkin? Yo, have, you so ever easy. have you ever picked... I, dude, I flicked one out of a window in a car once and it came back and hit my <laughs> friend, hit my fucking friend in the face. That's so <laughs> funny. I was like, it happened this quick. It was flick. And then I heard, oh! <laughs> That's pretty funny. Dude, it was so good. I wish... I've tried to do it like a million times after, but it never worked. Nah. I, I had something like that happen to me on a road trip, but it wasn't Sorry. a booger. It was... Uh, I, we were, we we're going to Joshua Tree. What are you looking at? Are those the new shoes? No, no, no. My new shoes are still... I haven't even taken them out to like put them on my feet yet. Are they're, you going to bring them to the, this weekend? I'm thinking about it, but also like I'm thinking about holding on to them until they release because when I got them, I checked the stock on them and they were like 300 bucks. But, by right. the way, Jacob Wolf hit on the sneaker app. For those of you who are too old Woo! to know what that means, it's fucking crazy. He has zero bots and he's hit on the sneaker app three times. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so these fours, I got the red cement fours. I love them. They look really good. I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep them. However, I haven't put them on yet because since I bought them, like I hit on them about a week and a half ago, the they were only selling for around 300 bucks. When I got them, I checked the price again. They're sitting at 400. So in a week and a half, they've gone up. Got it. So I'm, uh, look, if I could get 450 for this shoe, that's double what I paid for. Yeah. And I don't really need this shoe. You don't. But it looks good. It does. So I don't know. Like it, it's one of those shoes that I'm 50 50 on because I have a lot of fours, but I have three pairs of fours. So this would be my fourth. But my I reorganized my my shoe wall looking thing. Dope. Looks good. Looks real good. Um I got like about, two um, direct lines of ones, one whole line of three. Oh, did you are they in an order? Yeah, yeah. I put them all in like an order now. Tell me about your trip to Joshua Tree. Uh, we were talking about flicking oh, buggies. Oh, so I, when I hit a certain point on that Joshua Tree drive, I, I usually smoke something because there's no cops out there. It's like- Barstow? A, where? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Joshua Tree from LA. This oh, was got, like, it, yeah. got it, got it, So this was like uh, right around that area where you come off the freeway where it's like uh, right where the 10 splits off, but you yeah. take like the 27 to Yuma or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or is that a movie? Movie? Sounds like it. I think it is. Anyway, I think it's the, the 110 to Yuma. Or 315 or- 310 to, 310. Yuma? Oh, okay. 310 to Yuma. My point. Yeah. But so we take that exit and then it's just like an hour of just no cops, barely any people. You go through this little winding canyon. Like it's my favorite part of the drive. So this is usually where I spark up something. And I went to ash it out the window and that thing went out and came right back in and hit me right <laughs> in the face as I was driving. One, 
ash in your eye hurts. Yeah. Two, ash in your eye hot. Yeah, really yeah. <laughs> hot. And I'm so glad I didn't panic. And I just sat there and I handed the joint off and I'm sitting there like breathe. And then I just sit there and I go like I'm flicking it out and I ended up with no actual like ash inside of my eye, which was very lucky. But boy, did that hurt. Can it, I just go burned. on record and say don't smoke and drive? That was the lesson. Okay. Yeah. Oh, only because of the ash. Well, yeah, it's the only time it's happened. <laughs> Not because of the, you know, the driving impaired and yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 100 percent I understand that. Yeah, I yeah, understand yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It makes me, I'm not gonna lie though. Sometimes it does make me more calm and less road rage. Well, I will tell you, I'm, I did, I'm, I got more locked in because, like, look, uh, my well, smoking weed helps me lock in. It helps me focus. Can my, I, my, I'm an ADHD. I did read that. I've been telling you that for weed years. Weed helps people with ADHD focus. I've been telling you that is why it helps me for years. Like when I go and run errands. I smoke weed because it helps while I'm smoking errands or while I'm running errands, but before I leave because it helps me zero in and like remember that I'm on a schedule and what I'm doing. And also it, it just makes it more fun. Well, that too. A hundred percent. But you know how I told you I used to smoke before high school, my senior year. Yeah. Which again, isn't great, but yeah. can I be honest? I not accredit it, but I credit it a lot to how well I did in pre-calculus. I got a 90 on both of those finals. Yeah. And that was my second period every morning. My first period, I didn't do anything. Like I pretty much walked into that class, just said I was here for the hour and then got an A because I got put in a group project and we won this project. So my second period was pre-cal. And I was always, also I was always excited because I had a great class and good people in it, but my teacher was legendary. Like he was just- What was he, his name again? Robert Yusefian. Yeah. And he just made this class fun. But I would always grab a drink, like a Gatorade, and a bag of chips before I went to this class because they had vending machines at my school. And every time I'd walk in, I'd sit down. And while he was teaching, it made me laugh. I used to just shake my bag of chips, chips at him, and he would be explaining and do something. And he'd just hear shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Yeah. And he would stop and turn around and go. And he Funny. would just always, I'd always just give him a chip whenever he wanted. But he was just, yeah, he was just a, a great teacher. He always made it like the most fun. Can I tell you why I'm psyched to hear that? Because first of all, I think it goes without saying, Teachers are super important. They're Good Lord. incredibly underpaid. But what you just said is so, it to me applies to parenting too. You look, you have to teach, you have to parent. Inherently, you can take two approaches to that. Mm -hmm. The very serious, by the book. Yep. He, here, and, and by the way, it's not wrong. You're no. trying to get the information across. Yeah. But as people, students, kids, we're more receptive to fun. We're not, we're not very, I, I was never really responsive to my way or the highway. Like I did it uh, because you, yeah, dude, like, you, I didn't want to get in trouble and it was what it was, but like, it was never anything I put my, my, my full force into. Cause it was like yo, minimum effort being given to us. Right. So I'm going to give you that minimum effort back because that's what I feel like I'm being given math to have a guy do it in a fun way is difficult. It's so but hard. Yo, teachers who teach history who aren't having a good time. It, you, History should be the most, honestly, I would love to teach a history class. Yo, yo, it, you would have people do accents. You could act out scenes. People got to wear costumes. It's history, man. There's a lot of crazy fun things that happen. So not to capitalize on it. I would say the same thing about science, about, chemistry. But, yeah. But about parenting too, man. Look, you can tell somebody go to bed or you can be like, Hey man, race you to bed. Yeah, or I'm listen, if you can make it into the bed in five seconds, whatever, you win or, you know, I'm going to chase you or I'll give you a three-second head start. You're making it fun. Yeah. And, 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 and it's such a simple adjustment in how you look at things. Right. But people are going to receive it. Yo, there are times when it's for, where the, for a serious talk, but my, and I didn't yell very much when you were growing up. Nope. But when you did, we knew it was real. That's why. Because yeah. look, my dad yelled, and by the time I was twelve, I tuned that dude out. Yeah, because I was like, "Oh, was, oh, is this what we're doing again?" All right. Because there was no weight, there was no weight to it. Yeah, it it didn't seem more or less important because I heard it all the time. Right. But I I was like, I'm gonna pick and choose. So when I yell, they fucking know. Oh, this is for real, for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You also had that whistle though that I could hear from fucking. It was like it was like the bat signal for me. Like he yeah, had a whistle. Park. Yeah. You had a, he had a whistle no matter where we were. It was usually the park because 
like Saturdays would be baseball for everybody in the neighborhood. So we would, after our game, we would stay and watch our friends' games while my dad would like talk to the other parents or do whatever, right? Or shout shit. out Beeman Park, dude. Shout out Beeman Park. You'd also sometimes just go home and come pick me up four hours later. Yeah. Because I would just hang out with my friends at the park. Yeah. 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 But I remember it would be no no matter where I was, he would let go of this whistle and I would pop up like a dog and I would just see him like this. Wrap it up. And I'd yeah. be like, Okay, bye. And some friends would be like, we have to, we're still like in the middle of a game. I'm like, I'm not anymore. Later. Yeah. Because I, I knew that was it. Because I knew if I didn't go with that, I was getting left at the park. Yeah, I would have left you at the park. Which sure. is, yeah, which is not a bad thing, but it's like, it's just like a lesson thing. It's like, hey, it's like a, hey, you got to know when it's time to go. There's no arguing. Yeah. And if you argue, you lose that argument. I'm not waiting on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the guy driving the car. Yeah. And so I, I, yeah. I, I always, I always knew that whistle. Wherever that yeah. whistle came from, I was like, it's time to go. Yeah. I, I, I still know that whistle. Sometimes you do it when I don't know where you are. Where did I do it last? I feel like it was this weekend or last weekend. No, 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 no. It was, uh, it was a couple weekends ago. We were somewhere. I can't remember. But, but I did. I remember. I'm like, I need to use the whistle. Yeah. Cause I didn't know where you were and yeah. you hit it. And I was like, hold on. Yeah. yeah I know. Yeah. I, I know that noise. Hilarious. Yeah. 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 Um, so you, by the way, I love what you and Amon have been doing um, with going to visit dogs. Did you? Oh, oh yeah. So are you going to? Well, okay. Hear me out. So once a month, we've decided that uh, my girlfriend and I are going to this dog sh shelter. It's the Nevada SPCA. By the way, when we're here that third weekend in August, we should go do that video with them and Deal. go say, hey. Deal. There's uh, a couple dogs there I think you're really going to like. Dude, I'm, I, I, Dude I, I trust me. I, I would love to take a dog. Indiana Jones is... Can't do it. He's not... He likes little dogs. Yeah. Loves. Get a little dog. There's little dogs there. There's one that looks like Scrappy-Doo there right now. His really? name's Bruno. He's a one-year-old. I Dude, I would love to. I would love to. Um, and so we go to also to this place called The Claw, which is we've talked about it on this podcast. For those of you who haven't heard it, it's a claw machine store where you go pay. It's like a dollar a token. You get... Uh, plushies and all these they on these machines they yeah. swap them out every day every week whatever um, and so when we go and win a bunch of them what we do is we take those plushies and we go donate them to SBCA but also when we do that uh, we text a buddy of ours that we met there the first time we went name's Isaiah shout out Isaiah and we're like hey what do you need and so he was like dry cat food towels and blankets and we were like bet so we went and spent 150 bucks at Walmart and just bought a whole bunch of shit. That's so cool. And then we donated all the plushies as well. So it was like 18, 18 plushies with a whole bunch of other stuff. Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes. How does it make you feel? Be, because to me, I consider that being of service to people. Yeah. How does that, like, I've found in my, as I've gotten older, it's my number one favorite thing. How does that make you feel to be of service like that? For me, can I be honest? This is going to sound terrible. I don't feel like I'm doing it for the people. I'm doing it for the dogs. Well, of course, dude. Like, of course, so, yeah. so my of service is for the animals that are in there. Yeah, there's no... And I'm not, yeah. a, I'm not a big cat guy, but that's always what... Because I'm allergic to them. But if that's what they need, then that's what we're going to bring. So like, how does that make you feel, though, being a being of service? It's always just a good day. Yeah, Like, you always know what you're doing in that day. And so it always you always just have this energy of knowing that you're going to help an animal out yeah. or a bunch of them. And then when we always go there, we go and see some dogs and we let them out and we say hi. Uh, we said hi to two dogs yesterday, one named Coda. And Coda was, I couldn't even tell you what kind of dog, but he was like a husky because he had the coat of it, but he was big, like a mastiff. Mm -hmm. And he had kind of like clipped ears and a clipped tail. So he had this just ginormous wiggly butt. He was like 115 pounds and just, if he stood up taller than me on his back legs, like he was a big boy. He could have put his paws on my shoulder. That's amazing. And he was super friendly. We had a good time. We played some tug of war, ripped a toy, um, had to take it from him because he ripped it and was trying to pull all the stuffing out. And I was like, hey, hey give me that back. You can have the plushie that yeah. we brought in. Um, but we can't do him in the house because he's fucking gigantic. And I can't do the husky fur. It'll just... We it have more, We you. have so much fur everywhere yeah. from Milo. Yeah. The husky fur is just going to take over. Yep. And we don't have the time for all that cleaning. No, and I'm not sure how well he'd do your little buddy with a dog that big. He's got a lot of energy. So we were like, but super cute. He was super fun to play with. He was a cuddle bug. He just wanted to hang out. But we went in wanting to see a specific dog. His dog, his name was Moki. Moki is a nine-year-old brown pit bull. Okay. And he is handsome. He's super cute. Um, and he's got gray all in his face already, but really good energy. He's really gentle, very loving. Like the minute you get him in a room, he's just like, he does a little sniff, but then comes over and is like, what's up everybody. Yeah. We also played with a toy. We also ripped that toy. 
Um, he also tried to take the stuffing out, so we had to take it from him. But he's supposedly good with little dogs and not okay. good with big dogs. Okay. That's like my dog. Which I like because he was like, he just needs a calm dog. And look, if him and Milo just, like, if Milo just doesn't fucking like go near him and they just coexist, I'm cool with that. But also at the same time, like, we want to make sure Milo isn't just like scared to be in the house with another dog. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a day trip with Moki and we're going to go take him out uh, of the shelter. And for the day, we're going to go like get a puppuccino from Starbucks. We're going to go take him on a hike at Mount Charleston. Oh, he's psyched. And so we're going to go take him out for the day and bring him back. Oh, that's so brutal. Now, this is what the only reason I'm taking God, a chance with this dog. How do you do? I don't. I understand. This is the only reason I'm taking a chance with this dog. Because after we sat down with him for about 30 minutes, when he went to go back in his kennel, he wouldn't. He sat there. He planted. He pulled back. And I said, oh, is he usually like this? She goes, he's never done this the entire time he's been here. Yeah. Which means that whatever the connection, whatever me and Amon had with him is something special. So I want to fight for this little guy and hopefully try and bring him into our home. So after this Monday thing, we're going to try and bring him in for like a weekend. I love it. And dude. just hang out with him for a little bit. And I love it. See what we can do. Um, but, I think that's awesome. But yeah, man. I really, I really enjoy that shelter. They're just good staff, some really cute dogs in there. If you're in Nevada or anywhere here at Leo Las Vegas, Nevada SPCA has some dogs that need a home. Don't take Moki yet. Give me a couple weeks to figure out <laughs> if we're going to take him. Um, but I'm totally kidding. If you go and you see him and you love him, take him home. There's so many good dogs in that shelter. A lot of them are not very dog friendly, which is what I've been told. So if you're looking for a single dog for a single dog home, this shelter is the place to go. There's so many, so many, so many beautiful dogs in there. Go get them. There's a dog in there named blue. Also, she's a pit bull mastiff. She needs someone who needs to get her on some walks. so She can lose some LBs. Oh, really? She's about 30 pounds overweight. She's a unit though, but she is cute. Oh my goodness. Me and big booty Judy took a long walk this morning. Dude. Yeah. I was talking, I talked about how, we, yeah, you started whipping into sh whipping him into shape after I came to Nashville and was like, yo, why is his ass so fat? What yeah. the fuck's going on? Well, I'll tell you what's crazy is that it wasn't from lack of walking. We were, I, I, you know those, dude, the walks I took in the morning in Nashville, how long were those? Very long. Yeah, sometimes they took like two, two and a half hours. Yeah, I remember going on a, what you called a short one and I was like, what the fuck is going on Yeah, with you this? came back winded. You were like, what's the I came home with the sleep. I took a goddamn nap. I, um, what but, that? We were just feeding him so much. Right, right, right. But that still, yeah, yeah. So feeding him less, but still with the consistent walks, drop his weight. Yeah, which yeah, is fine. yeah. We we did a we did a definite we did a yeah, walk. Yeah, I, I didn't say you weren't walking him enough when I was there. I was like, yeah, whatever you're feeding him, fucking yeah, we, stop, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> this dude is <laughs> massive. <laughs> this little hand bone of an ass weighs oh, more than my, my leg. God, dude, his butt was f enormous. Dude, when I came, you were like, it's not that big. I was like, bro, this man is thick, like. Uh, what three C's, seven C's? Like, dude needed to chill out a little bit. So I'm glad you. I, but I knew, I knew he'd trim down. Yeah, you just needed to cut back on whatever you were feeding him. Dude, um, I uh, and by the way, you know, we didn't talk about this last week, but I kind of, you know, this. What's your thoughts on the strike that's happening with the SAG and WGA? Um, I don't know. Like, I understand the writers are fighting for what they need, and I, I totally get that. However, I also don't know what they're what specifics they're asking for and anything extra over what they're asking for. But and this is a serious question: Is there anything that's going to benefit any of the PAs or anybody under the writers, like of production or grip or lighting, like are, is, or what they fighting for in the union? Is that going to affect any one of the people, any one of the the uh, groups or departments under them? I don't think so. I because mean, because here's it, my it only that will be go back to work. Here, that's my thing. Yeah, is like. You guys, they've put it out of, look, there's obviously still things shooting. There are some things that are going to be like, look, fuck it. We got shit to do. We have a budget. No, not, that's, not, not, that's not union, not union stuff. There's some union stuff that, that is, you have to, you have to apply for a waiver. Um, and it has to be purely independent. It can't be associated with the AMPT, whatever, PB yeah. or whatever the fuck it is. Right. But that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like, so in doing that, the 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 business the the industry has practically come to a stop. Yes. In doing so, like if I was still a PA, I'd be fucked. Like yep. I and I know a bunch of my PA friends who are fucked right now for work. Yeah. Because 
they're, they can't get a job because writers don't want to go work, which again, I get y'all are fighting for your shit. That's fine. But y- y'all aren't thinking about the smaller people under you. Okay. Like I heard somebody say they were fighting for meal penalties to make sure that they would get it approved and you would get paid on a timely basis, which affects PAs a lot. And I like that because I can't tell you how many times I've gone into a meal penalty on certain shows to where I got paid weeks later for it. Yeah. I get it. I love that. That's cool. But it still does nothing for the fact that there are people who have to now go back to finding restaurant jobs to put their career chasing on a hold because people who are already in the position they want to be in, not, and this is going to sound terrible, but need, not need something more, but need something better. Okay. I hear what you're saying. Um, and let me just add this. The writers are not getting paid what they used to get paid. And they're not such a huge part of our, and I'm part of both unions, such a huge part of what we used to make and, and what we counted on was residuals. Right. Right. And that's, not only are you not getting a 22 episode season, which is what broadcast used to get you. Right. You're getting an eight episode Netflix, but you're not, that, look, man, how many you times? S- you sell all the rights to Netflix, Let right? Let me ask so- you a question, dude. How many times do you think Gilmore Girls has been watched on Netflix? Ask those people whose faces are on there and the writers how much money they've seen. No. So, so here's the thing. I hear what you're saying. But so the writers and the actors are supposed to... That's the thing. I get that. They're not... Am I supposed to go, well, because I don't want this PA out of work, I guess I'll take... Pennies to the dollar. I get that. And I, and I, again, I understand. I'm just, I, again, I'm thinking of someone who totally. never got to go any higher than being a PA. And I, I know what that struggle is already to get yeah. PA work because there's so many PAs because in order to get into this business, you either got to know someone and start higher or you got to start where everybody else fucking starts, yep. which is yep. where I was for yep. seven years. So I'm also just thinking of all the, all the young kids who are just trying to pay rent. Totally like get that. Just trying to get by and also still trying to and, chase what they want to do. And the writers? The writers, I feel like I understand more than the actors. Writers and the actors are fighting for the same people. We're not fighting for Robert Downey Jr. and fucking Aaron Sorkin. And right. they're not fighting for themselves either. We're fighting for the people who are making $24,000 a year, $26,000 a year, who need insurance. And who the residual money, a lot of times, would push them over that threshold. We're fighting for the writers who uh, one season on a show gets them insurance, but maybe not now. Right. We're fighting for, here's the thing. And this is why I never understand why people who are sports people who side with the, with the owners or people who are siding with the studio, you don't side with the billionaires. Yeah. The billionaires are trying to fuck you. Look at every single business, every single business, the airlines, Walmart, whatever the fuck, they are beholden to their stockholders. They give zero fucks about you. The, the, they give zero fucks about yeah. you. And so to side with anybody who isn't a worker, to side with an owner who does not have your best interest in heart. Listen, man, it's mind boggling to me that this is an issue. Even a, like in... Again, let's go back to Walmart. It's mind-boggling to me that those fucking billionaires don't go, you know what we're going to do? We're going to give everybody 2 or $3 more. Right? Now, the shareholders would hate it. But at what point in America are the shareholders and the fucking owners going to be like, you know what? Instead of making $400 million this year, we're going to make $300 million Yeah. Because we're going to make the whole country better. Right. And so this is the thing. The fact that the producers are talking about using AI in perpetuity, taking a picture of you on day one as an extra and getting rid of you and using your AI in the background, not just on this movie, not just on this TV show, but forever. The fact that they're talking about using AI to replace writers is a fucking frightening notion. And it's all 1,000% money-driven as opposed to quality-driven or human-driven. Right. You should watch the first, the new season of Black Mirror, the first episode, is literally what you just said. Yeah. It's like, it's Salma Hayek's in it. And so she pretty much sold 
she sold the rights to her face to, it's not Netflix, but it's their streaming yeah. form. And it uses her face to do these obscene acts. And she comes in pissed. Like they can't do that. And they're like, they can though. Like you can't do anything about it kind of shit. So by the way, Selma Hayek, you should watch that. All due respect. And you know how much I love your mom. The best looking woman who's ever been on camera. I'm not disagreeing. Without a doubt. Second to your mom, the best looking woman who's ever been on camera oh. and still holding it down. <laughs> yeah. Crazy talk. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. She got to be mid fifties. She's like 54 or something. Hit, like me, hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me. She older than me. You said hit you. I tried to hit you. She's older than me. She might be. But I would say the same thing about your mom. I'm not going to tell anybody how old she is, but I, I, she doesn't age. Your mom doesn't age. 56. Yikes. What the fuck? It's pretty nuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, oh, yeah, I got to pay my credit card today. Sorry. I, it's the ninth. I just saw the date. My apologies. <laughs> I just, I, I find it, I find it fascinating when people side with billionaires. Yeah, no. And look, this isn't me siding with. I know. Okay, I know, okay. I know. Yeah, I, I, look, I'm with the writers and the actors. I get it. And thank you for the education. I appreciate it because like, I wasn't really sure. I was just more focused on my boys because. Yeah. I know they're struggling right now yeah. and I know it's hard. And my buddy's like, dude, I might have to go back to Whole Foods. And I'm like, fuck Whole Foods. Like, we don't want to fucking do that. I know but who that dude is. He should just come out and have some fun with us. Yes, we'll talk about that. Okay. I know, I know, I know. Um, but a bunch of other people, like uh, my buddy Rich had to take a job, was like, I don't really want to do it, but there's nothing else really here. And it's in Tulum, which is cool, but it's, look, going to Tulum for almost two months sounds great when you're not working in Tulum for two months. That also, makes things a little harder. When people are like, oh, you went to Tulum for two months, lucky. They're thinking you got to pick your hotel or your where you're staying. Yeah, and then I get to sit on the beach for, oh, then I get my weekend. How's yeah, the air fucking, conditioning down there? Bro, Rich said that there is no AC in the house. Yeah. He said in this house, there is, and I'm not going to say what we're filming because I don't want to get tagged by fucking anybody for this. Yeah. Where, where they're filming and what they're filming. Obviously, they're in Tulum. I can say that. But they're filming something that has more people than last season. It's in a smaller house and it's hotter in Tulum than it was in Panama. It was fucking hot in Panama. God you, damn you it. You got some bug bites in Panama. Bro, I came back with, do you remember how many I had every day for the entire two months I was there? Yeah. 40 plus. Yeah. Every day. On my body, my arms, my legs, my neck. I got one on my lip one of those days, you motherfucker. Dude, that... Those fucking things. But dude, How it's angry. A it's 106 in Tulum right now. 90% humidity. No, dude, I'm out. And this house is solar powered. No, no. So no. you can't turn the solar power on or it fucks up everything because all of the lights and everything are plugged yeah. in the house. It'll blow the whole circuit and ruin the show. And it's smaller than the last one. I don't no. even get how that works. It doesn't make any sense. Let me ask me. you a question, for real. Because I, just thinking about it is making my blood boil. Ugh. How angry does a bug bite on your lip make you? Yo, can I be honest? It it was weird because I was like, I can't feel this part of my lip. And my lip felt numb for a couple of days because it just like, I couldn't know what was happening. Um, it went away faster than all the other ones though and didn't itch, which I thought was really weird. Dude, can I? But it, it, was, it was frustrating. I looked like I just got bad lip filler just <laughs> in one spot of my lip. <laughs> it was fucked. I was not happy about it. But it was, yo, it was fucking hot in Panama. <laughs> like, god damn. When I was in Seattle with Joey Diaz in, hey, the fucko. in the 90s, there was this dude who came to work. I was working and I was part owner of a bar called Lobo Loco. Have I told you that? Yeah, dude. You used to also tell me how about the Korean mob used to run through there. That's right. And how fucking. That's right. That yeah, was legit. Yeah. That, you, you, one of the owners, when I first started working there, was in the Korean mob. Crazy. And then one day he just stopped showing up and I asked the other owner, I said, where's, I think his name is Louie. Well, let me guess what he said back to you. Who's Louie? I go, where's that Louie? He goes, we don't talk about Louie anymore. Yeah. Who's Louie and I we don't like, talk about Louie anymore oh, means the same shit. thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, but he my was, boy got thrown in the river somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. We never saw him again. Never no, saw him. no shit you didn't because, yeah. Um, but, uh, Jesus. Um, there was this dude who worked at the bar, I hired this dude named Frankie. Hey, yo, Frankie. And so Frankie um, had a bad case of the herp. Oof. And it would flare up on his lip. Yep. And so Joey started calling him Lip. <laughs> and he was like, what's up, Lip? <laughs> <laughs> and I was always like, hey, man, wait, because he was behind the bar. I was like, hey, man, could you not? How about a Band-Aid? He was like, you, you want me to put a Band-Aid like over my lip? I'm like, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to order a drink from you with an open sore on your face. It's fair. I will tell you that though, dude, this dude. It's fair though. It's very, like, that's accurate. I wouldn't order from him either. No, man. I would just be like, hey, how about. Not unless he was wearing gloves and a mask. He, he, listen, it was such a lip. And every now and then he'd, he'd be like, he'd come in. I'd be like, oh, lip, what's going on? He's Oof. like, yeah, I just woke up with it. I'm like, oh, bummer. Yeah. Big bummer. Yeah. Uh, but he had a great face, tough lip. That's um, what she said. Oh, we're almost at the end. Yeah. Did you, have, did you have anything else you wanted to uh, talk about? Did you have anything else you want to talk about? I want to say this. I talked about my couple things. I do want to say this. Um, I am going to shoot my special. Ooh. Seattle, Seattle, Seattle. Either Seattle, Seattle or Houston. Seattle, 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 Seattle. Seattle. Yeah? Do Seattle, do Seattle. How come? Because I just haven't been to Seattle in a long time. And also, I, it makes more sense to pay homage to where you really started comedy. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, you started in the Seattle Underground. Like, that's where you should go film your special. It makes the most sense, yeah, especially to your story. Yeah, look, Houston's a great city. Don't get me wrong. Shout out H-Town. Like, but also, the last time I was in H-Town anyway, was traumatizing. Right. So, What was it called? Resort World? Astro World? Yeah, sorry. Resort World is a hotel here <laughs> <Yeah>. in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but yeah, so, oh, but also Seattle just, again, it just makes more sense for your story and paying homage to where you came from. Yeah. That's why I think you should do it. Okay, we'll do it in Seattle. And we could go run around and see where Lobo Loco used to be and just like, you can, it's like, you know how mom, where every time we drive through LA, she points out one of the, one of 37 different places she used to live. Amazing. We can go do that in Seattle. You can just, because I haven't been to Seattle as an adult, like Seattle, like, oh, down, really? like downtown Seattle. I haven't been to Seattle as an adult, adult ever. I, I would love to take you guys on a little. Bro, I haven't been to, the last time I was in Washington, I was there for that fucking wedding. Oh, that's right. How old are you? 15? No, oh, dude. 16? I, I don't know. 18? I feel, I feel like I was older than that. You were still in high school though. Yeah, I feel like I was 17 or 18. But yeah, that was the last time I was there in the state of Washington, period. So, and then before that, it had been since I was 13 and that was to Boffel. So I've never right. been to downtown Seattle since I've turned 18, 21, anything like that. Uh, I'll, so, I'll book it. I think Seattle's the way to go for you. I'll book it. And I want to... um. I'll book it and I'm going to, cool. I'm going to throw it on. I'm not, I've decided I'm not going to try to sell it. I'm just going to put it on YouTube. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I, uh, yeah, I'm not going to try. I've talked to some people who have Netflix specials and Amazon specials. And, what we just talked about. You're not, I mean, you get that initial payment, but you don't get anything else after that. I'm not uh, in control of my material. I, does I, it, YouTube ends up after a certain amount of views paying dividends, doesn't it? Of course, but I also, I, you know, I I want to be able to give it to my fans for free. You've always been about the reasonable price, anything. Tickets, your meet and greet's free. You don't charge anything for photos, signatures, nothing like that. And a lot of other comics of your stature charge like 50 and up for meet and greets and just for a photo. Well, I don't want to do that, man. I, I feel like if you left your house to come see me. No, no, no. Yeah. Now, I, I will tell you, we're getting into waters we where, haven't been in yet. where there's like, like we're going to be doing an 1100 seat theater. I, I just can't do a, I just can't do an, you know, free meet and greet for 11. Not, it's got nothing to do with free. I can't just do an all it, encompassing I, meet and greet. It for, adds an extra. Dude, that would be. But also we're going to sell merch. But that, it's not that. It's, it's not about that. It's, it's that meet and greet that even we did at the theater this week was almost an hour and a half. Yeah. So, so 1,100 people might be pushing the number that I could put in line. Yeah. Like imagine when we, like remember when we did it in, uh, at Fortitude Music Hall in Australia and that was a thousand people. Yeah, like, dude, that was 400, a, 400 people stopped to take photos with us. That was a long, and I, and by the way, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to be there and I'm super psyched that people are waiting to get a picture. It's super humbling. Yeah. Look, dude, in Tulsa, it was crazy that line. Oh my God. Right. But it's also like, I'm, I start to get really tired. I, I don't know, especially if we have another show. We were not going to have another show after if we do an 1100, but like if we have another show after, especially at a club, like it's, it, we got to think of the right way to do this. And I don't know if it's, I don't want to do first come first serve because then people are going to, some people are going to leave before the show's over some to people get are line. Push. Yeah. 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 So we got to think of the smart way to do that. What do you think? The only, I don't want to, the, the only smart way to do it, if I have to be so honest with you, is to sell is to sell them, but we don't want to do that. But because like some people 
can't, even if we made them like five bucks for like the first 50 or like, you know, it was like first 50 to 60 people. It's the cheapest it can be. You buy it. You can either buy it at the door when you walk in or online prior. And then when we sell out of that spot, we sell out of that spot. What about, but I, but also like we've always just done a free meet and greet. Yeah. It's never, it, it's hard for us to just switch it like that. Yeah. yeah. Right off the top. Yeah. 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 So I, 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 I yeah. I, I, that's the only way to limit it. The only way to limit it is to limit a certain amount of spots and have it be paid. Cause if it's paid, you, if it's paid, you can't fake your way in. They have your name on a list. You're already set up to come in. You have a certain color wristband, shit like that. What if you buy merch? We take a picture. That's the same as charge. The same, also the same thing we've been doing though. And Wait, also, no, you don't have to buy it. You well, don't right, have to but buy yeah, but Some people can't, have, some people, unless we have stickers there that are five bucks. Do you know what I'm saying? We have to have something else on the table that is for that affordable working middle class who sometimes some people can't spend $30 yeah. on a t-shirt. So you have to figure out that happy medium of where you can go with it. You know what I've been doing like in Nashville? I'll walk around the line like this Sunday. I walked, I walk the line and take pictures with people who are waiting in line pre-show. Okay. But then my thing is for that is like the only thing also with limiting the amount of meet and greet spots is you limit the amount of merch you can sell. And then you limit the amount of how many people can buy unless you have it in a completely separate spot than when you're taking photos. But I'm also the one who sells merch. So that takes me away from taking the photos. With yeah, you. I want you in the picture. We have a system set up. It's just, you're right. At a certain point, like we're, we're just it, hitting a mark. I'm that's going to be tough. Look, it, it just might have to be, it might have to be when we hit a certain mark that we just can't do meet and greets. And if you catch us before we walk in, we'll grab a photo. But like, and you know, when we were at Fortitude Music Hall, I went out before we went on and I said, hey, to a bunch of people and just kind of like sat out in the crowd and said, what's up? And I love doing that. Like, yeah. that's awesome. Me too, dude. But I really like talking to people. Me too. That's the only thing is like, I like talking to everybody. Me too. And I, I love and I hate that they're an hour and a half. I love because the fact that an hour and a half worth of people want to stay and chat with us and say what's up and take a photo is lit. But also, you're right. I'm fucking tired after that. Plus, dude, our second show usually starts a little later because our meet and greets longer. But again, that's not our fault. Can't fucking, can't help that shit. You know what I'm what, saying? Like, what, I will say, you know what? I've, it dawned on me. I got two other things to say and then we got to get out of here. Oh, yeah. It dawned on me. Looking at the crowds in Erie and looking at the crowds in Nashville. But the people who come to my show, it's such an eclectic group. 100%. The demo. Yeah, you, you, is, have, now, you, I will have, say, you have anywhere from nine year olds to 80 year olds. It's, it's great. It's eclectic in the white person. It's yeah. not like a very diverse. It's not, it's, it's white. Yo, in Erie, when I came up to some hip hop, they, everybody in the crowd oh, was yeah, dude. silent. It was almost like I blew their minds it's with something. For sure, a was like, white yeah, crowd. Yeah. But, um, and I mean, when I like, like, but, but all different forms of white people. The whitest of the whitest people. Too. Dude, but, but like anything from like, you know, we had somebody at the show in Nashville this week who had made her ears legit elf ears. Like plastic surgery? Yeah. Gross. Legit why? elf ears. Why Did not? Did you say why? No. But then we also have, you know. Uh, Regular uh, white people. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's so amazing. <laughs> but I had to tell you and then we got to go. Dude, I started watching this show and I know I'm a couple years behind. Oh God. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. What is it? Have you heard of a show called Lost? No, I'm kidding. Stop. I was going to say. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck, man? You watch that like religiously. No, 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 no. no. Have you? Dude. You watched that religiously every day on cable television. Oh, I remember. Man. Lost is in my top five all time. I still haven't seen all of it. Dude. Do you watch Peaky Blinders? Oh, with, uh, with Hardy? No, but, yeah, Tom Hardy is in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, not his twin brother. Not his but twin. Just, yeah, just, just him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I, I see a lot of uh, I see a lot of clips of it on TikTok. Yo, it, it was it's really good from Fuck, what I seen. Dude, do you have you ever watched Peaky? Fucking, I'm mid season two, and I who's the other guy in that? He's also an Oppenheimer. Cillian, yeah, Killian, Killian Murphy. Killian. You know, you know what he said? He said between Peaky and Oppenheimer, he smoked so many on-screen cigarettes that he won't he won't take a role if he's smoking cigarettes in the role. My question for Peaky is was gonna be, are those real cigarettes? They that can't dude be. Is nonstop. They have to be herbal cigarettes. But still. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's a habit though. He even he, he's come out and said, if you book me for a movie role, it can't be a smoker role. I won't do it. As, Yo, after Peaky and so Oppenheimer, he this. was like, I can't fucking do it anymore. He's so good. He's so good. He's a great actor. Yeah, dude. Are you going to watch Peaky Blinder? I might. How's that accent? Peaky Blinder. Not bad. 
pretty good. Not bad. That was Peaky Blinder. All right, let's relax. You Peaky Blinder. What else? Say? Give me something else. Do you even say. know what does Peaky Blinder even mean? It's the name of the. No, I know gang. what that. Oh, oh, it's the name of the gang. Yeah, got yeah, it, got it. the Peaky Blinders. Got it. Hit me. Why? Because right? they blind people with their pupils? Were their peakies? You. Yeah, they have razor blades in their hats. What? In their paperboy hats, and they fucking fat Peaky Blinder. Really? Yeah, that's kind of lit. Yeah, right. It's like some 007 shit. Hit me with something you want me to say in the Peaky Blinder accent. Uh, Peaky we'll, Blinder. We'll be in. We'll be in Florida this weekend. We'll be in Florida this weekend. Mm. Where'd that word weekend go? On? And then I say we're in Jacksonville. We are in. Uh, I'm losing. You should stop. <laughs> I tried to see how long you would go until it. It we're stopped. in Jacksonville. All right. In Orlando. Can I tell you what I love about coming to Orlando this time of year? You know, there's a lot of people from the UK, and you know how I can tell you they're from the UK? Because they burn like lobsters? They're fucking bright they're red. They're super red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, they've never seen a sun like that no, before. No, no, no. It's also those, it's those people and those from the Midwest. So it's like kind of like an up and down because sometimes those people who come from like the Dakotas, they come show up and they're like, Ugh, what the fuck is this? I'm going to, if I when I see those bright red beat people, I'm going to scream at them. Pinky Blinder! This is so funny. Don't do that. <laughs> I've got a pinky blinder. <laughs> Ladies and pinky gentlemen, blinder. we will be in Jacksonville, Florida on the 10th and this weekend on Friday, the or, sorry, Thursday, the 10th and Orlando, Florida on the 11th and 12th, Friday and Saturday. Um, we had a second show in Jacksonville. We did. Are yep. we in a theater or a club? Club. Okay. Um, and so we'll be there. Uh, the weekend after that, we are in Corpus Christi on the 18th and the 19th. It's just a Friday and a Saturday. Um, we're super excited for that. And then we have the week off after that. And then we are in town in Vegas for the last weekend in August, first week in September. So come see what we do out Labor here. Labor Day weekend, dude. And it's oh, it's going to be, be packed. Come see what we fucking do, y'all. Uh, we're going to be in a city near you. UK and Europe tour is already up. Dates are on uh, comedianjoshwolf.com. Uh, but again, also go to that website in case you need uh, any tour dates or tickets. Links are always there. Um we thank you guys again so much for always tuning in. We really appreciate it. We're getting, I'm getting more and more comments on the road about people saying they're listening to the podcast or they started from the beginning and are coming up to the top. So thank you guys for going through the archives and just coming in and saying hello. Um, I want to say something. I'm super grateful for this time with you. And I'm super grateful for this new chapter in our relationship. Mm-hmm. I am very excited just to be able to spend more time with you being creative. Yeah. I'm, I'm super psyched. It's always what we had a lot of fun doing. Yeah. Whether it's been sports or anything else. I think that's where our creative came from first. Yeah. Um, so yeah, new chapter for us and to the top. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. Um, Joshua Comedy on all platforms. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Uh, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. And hey, we've been having a lot of fun on Twitch recently. Um, Twitch.tv forward slash youthful wolf. You just it's, spit in my face when you said Twitch. Just good. You know. It's going to be somewhere right. I think it's usually on this side, actually, somewhere like that. Um, we usually do Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, do you spit on the screen when you say when you stream? Yeah, actually, sometimes I do. Sometimes I spit right into the camera. <laughs> um, Mondays and Tuesdays we've been streaming. Uh, next week we're going to have a Wednesday stream because we leave on Thursday, so I'll have enough time to do another one of those. Um, but we've been having a whole bunch of fun just playing old Call of Duties. And, uh, you said duty. No, I've been saying duty a lot the last couple of weeks. Um, but thank you guys again. It's been so much fun. Um, but yeah, come join us. Come see what's up. Come see what all the hullabaloo is about. And we'll be in a city near you. Also, I think we're going to have your mom come on in one of these pods. Okay. Yeah, I think she's... I think that'd be a... What do you guys think? I think that'd be a fun little episode. Come down. Have your mom on here. We can... She can have that camera, right? She yeah, can yeah. sit right there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it'll be a good time. Okay. I'm in for that. Uh, all right. And I think we're going to redo, redo that. You and I got to take some photos after this to send to a bot so she can make some photos. Yeah, dude, that Photoshop is going to be hilarious. Yeah. We'll see y'all later. We love you. Hey, do something nice for someone today. Tell someone you love them. We'll see you next time. So grateful for all of you. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> <laughs> later.